Since I started doing these videos, I never thought in a thousand years that I would do one basically on Aaron Long. Yes, the object of USMNT discontent, there's no doubt about it. MLS Cup playoffs this weekend was involved in uh, the game-winning goal for FC Cincinnati, and he got lit up. It was a bad play by Aaron Long. And that coupled with uh, two bad plays in each of the September World Cup qualifiers, it blew up. Now, let's go over a few things, but there's a couple things working against Aaron Law. Now, one, quite frankly, and I think we can all agree this, he's not your first choice to be the starting center back at a World Cup. Maybe before the injury, when he tore his Achilles. Coming back, he's been good, but certainly not the same player. You never thought when we were watching this team in 2021 that it would come to this, right? He is here because, A, injuries to the position. I mean, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now if Miles Robinson didn't have a similar injury on his own. We're waiting for Chris Richards. Chris Richards started key World Cup qualifiers with Walker Zimmerman after the Miles Robinson injury. So that was the partnership. Chris Richards is really the only major injury, the only real injury for the U.S. team right now, but we wait to see if he starts returning to training. He really has about two weeks, maybe one week to be considered a starter, maybe too late, really two weeks, three weeks to get on that roster, or it's going to be too late. Now, the other situation against Aaron Long, it's not really his fault, is that he's very similar to Walker Zimmerman. These are two center backs that uh, kind of do the same job for you. Big, sturdy, more traditional center backs. We don't have like that modern style. Now, and with Zimmerman and Turner, or uh, Zimmerman and Robinson, or Zimmerman and Richards, you had the, the yin and the yang, which was very cool. So you had those two things against them. Now, I will say that what has happened to Aaron Law, I feel bad because it's okay to have criticism about it, but it, it's, it's, it's wrong for it to be so pointed. <laughs> and it's gotten really nasty. And if you don't think, I feel bad for him because he's hearing all of this. And the reason we know that is because Kellen Acosta came out in an interview and, and basically said, essentially, that we are aware when we see this pushback and no one again, is getting more pushback than Aaron Long. He's a good defender. He's just not World Cup good, right? But we have a situation. Now, I will say that play, basically the only thing that Aaron Long did on that play was just that he's slow, which a lot of world-class center backs share that trait. There was a turnover on the far side of the field. They were caught up on a high line, which is the way the Red Bulls were playing and great ball by Sergio Santos, and Brandon Vasquez, who's clearly much faster than we thought, separated from Long way too easily, and scored the goal. So there's a thousand things you could talk about that play, but everyone said, Aaron Long, Aaron Long. I was on Twitter. He was trending within five minutes. It was the, the Stan accounts, as they are so acclaimed, and then it was the national media folks, and they all piled on Aaron Long. So there's a lot going against him and even if he, he's able to play and he's selected, you wonder where his head's at. Because again, he's hearing this. And I've never seen anything quite like this, where everyone's zoomed into him. There's been a lot of players playing poorly or not playing for the U.S., but all the discontent has been going to Aaron Long. What can you do is the question, and that's what we're going to answer here on The Soccer OG. Check out the Soccer OG podcast where all podcasts are available. The one is up with the armchair analyst, Matt Doyle of MLSsoccer.com. And we're previewing the MLS Cup playoffs. And we'll also talk about the hard line of U.S. fandom towards the national team. So check that out and check out the entire library of Soccer OG podcasts. And like and subscribe us here. Let's go. Let's go. So what are the options? Now, to be honest... In all likelihood, there's no reason to see that Aaron Long is not going to be starting at least the first game for the U.S. When you've played these last friendlies and you've been the combination of choice, you rarely see a big pivot unless something's really glaring. And I don't know if we've seen that, despite what people feel and see what they've seen in these plays. 
I don't know if we've seen that from Greg Berhalter's eyes. So in all likelihood, that's going to happen. Now, I can assure you Greg Berhalter, has see, he's definitely seen these plays, and he is sitting there in the biggest month of his life coming up, wondering if everything is in the right place. Because if Aaron Long plays that World Cup and has a horrible gaffe, it's not going to be Aaron Long's fault, it's going to be Greg Berhalter's fault. He's thinking about that, and he's looking, I'm sure, if there's a better option. If for no other reason to have the yin and the yang. Are there players like that that can complement Walker Zimmerman? Because I think we can agree that Zimmerman and Long just don't complement each other all that well. But Zimmerman's ahead of the pecking order. He's going to start. The question is, who would it be if not Aaron Long? There are some options. Obviously, it all begins and ends with John Brooks. And, you know, some of the things that I mentioned about how we've got to be fair with players, we, you know, John Brooks is the social media golden boy. And he played for Benfica this weekend, and he had a, 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 a nice pass where he hit sideline to sideline. I would say, and I talked to a lot of coaches, that's the kind of pass you don't really want to make. You know, that's the kind of pass that if you're playing a good team, and Benfica were not, that uh, could get you in a little bit of trouble. So it was, a, it was a cup game. It was against a fourth division team in Portugal that took Benfica to penalties. But so they picked up this clip and it was airing everywhere. And everyone's celebrating John Brooks. Now, the thing with John Brooks is not the way he's playing. And he's playing for an incredible team. Oh, he's not really playing a lot. And I, I got to be honest, I don't think uh, his foreseeable future is with Benfica. Because he's playing against maybe the best teenage center back on the planet right now. And Nicolas Otamendi who uh, are logging lots of minutes together. And wonder if he's the first guy off the bench we shall see. So John Brooks is not going to be in there because clearly he had some heat with Greg Berhalter. Clearly something happened there and it's too late to cure it. And he's, he's basically sacrificed his World Cup going to Benfica and not getting off to a quick start in the season knowing he's not going to be called up. But there's something else there with John Brooks that we can't put our finger on about the trajectory of his career. Uh, it's not where it should be, right? I would imagine he should have signed a big new deal with Wolfsburg and still be there. Or maybe still playing in the Bundesliga, playing every week. Not potentially playing some minutes at Benfica. But we can take John Brooks out of there because it's, it's just not in the plans. Like We've we got to have a real conversation. That's what we're about here, right, on the Soccer OG. So clearly it's not going to be John Brooks. Now, there are other guys up there. Some are inexperienced. Some are young. Some may not partner as well with Walker Zimmerman. I mean, Cameron Carter-Vickers I love, for instance. He's a solid guy uh, playing with Celtic, but he kind of is more in that mold of Zimmerman and uh, long. You know, big, strong, robust, kind of center back. A little bit more dynamic, certainly. I He might be in the mix, but I think we got to look really closely. Now, if it's... If it's an emergency situation and you want experience, there's a guy out there, Tim Ream. Tim Ream, who, if you want experience, not only playing every week for Fulham, but he is the captain for Fulham. So that's a positive. Another positive, if you don't want to, you know, rock the apple cart too much, your starting left back plays alongside Tim Ream every week. So there is some familiarity. There's a lot of familiarity. You know, so you don't have to worry about bringing a guy in. He, goes, he already knows Anthony Robinson intimately. They are shoulder to shoulder in every Fulham game. So there's Tim Ream. So if we heard Tim Ream's name called November the 9th, then we know that uh, probably Aaron Long is on the outs. Tim Ream, obviously he's played every game for Fulham. I will say their defensive record hasn't been great, given up a lot of goals lately after a nice start to the season. Uh, but he would be the more, most comfortable addition. Now, that's a guy who's probably his international prospects were behind him. It's, a, it's an emergency call-up, so to speak. There is somebody out there, dynamic play, who's already in the system, that has started important games for the U.S. team last year and is on a sharp trajectory upwards, and that's Mark McKenzie. To me... I would, I want a little longer look at Mark McKenzie, but everything else is moving in the right direction. Can he, can he play well with Zimmerman? When he played in the September games alongside Zimmerman, it was okay in the first game. Second game was not okay. Second game, he, uh, it was rough. 
He made, as, again, you're not going to get, people aren't going to criticize him like Aaron Long, but he made two mistakes that were worse than anything Aaron Long did. I can assure you. So Mark McKenzie's playing for Genk in the Belgian League. Their defensive record is fantastic. They're now in first place. They passed Royal Antwerp and Sam Vines in the standings. And he's in there every game. After he missed the first two games, he is in there. Mark McKenzie has been a European success story. By the way, uh, let's hear it for the Philadelphia Union and their development. Because they had Mark McKenzie and another guy I, I want to mention here shortly. Austin Trusty started at Philadelphia. Then you have Brendan Aronson and all the others. Philadelphia Union. Whew, thank goodness for them. They have a big footprint on this U.S. men's national team. So Mark McKenzie is, for those that are absolutely steadfast believing that Aaron Long cannot start a game in the World Cup, Mark McKenzie is your best bet. So we put him ahead. We put Tim Ream too. I think those two are realistic. They're not far-fetched like some guy coming out. John Brooks is not realistic because whatever happened, happened. And it's not happening. So he kind of, by going to Benfica, he told everyone, I'm not going to the World Cup. So I'm going to build up with Benfica, see if I can get games really by the end of 2022, 2023. You go a little further down and you know the names. We mentioned Cameron Carter-Vickers playing for Celtic regularly. The SPL, not the, the highest standard of the league, but very good. Eric palmer Brown playing regularly, came off the bench for Trois in Ligue 1. They're, they're near the bottom, but that's fine. Uh, league on is a very credible league with incredible competition. Very underrated league in many ways, too. That would be a bit of a stretch to see those guys jump up the pecking order. They're in their, I think, CCV. Carter Vickers is 24. I think Eric Palmer Brown is 25. So they got the experience, but just not on the national team. Not a lot of national team play. So I just don't think, I mean, while both of them could make the squad, I think Carter Vickers is in. Eric Palmer Brown probably on the outside looking in. They both could make the squad. Can they start a game? I was, maybe Cameron Carter Vickers, but I think it's a long shot. And I think you're, you're certainly behind Mark McKenzie, who is the number one after still Zimmerman and Aaron Long. The most exciting new development is Austin Trusty, who we mentioned shortly ago. A late bloomer in his development, I think he's 23, was with the Philadelphia Union, was actually traded for allocation money to the Colorado Rapids. So that just tells you that he kind of took a turn downward and now he's out of the blue, he gets bought by Arsenal. You know, he's not gonna play for Arsenal and he hasn't. He was loaned out to Birmingham City. He has been incredible for Birmingham City. They're, uh, they're in 12th place in the championship. Uh, they've had a really good defensive record. They had a clean sheet over the weekend at Hull. Uh, who had the top score in the championship, and he's played all 14 games. And now there's articles coming out about how Austin Trusty can make his way into the Arsenal squad of Mikel Arteta's. Do a search on Austin Trusty. You will see 20 articles about him, uh, Arsenal, seriously considering bringing him into that squad. That's mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. To think Austin Trusty, a guy who's kind of mentioned a couple years ago in MLS, oh, no big deal, is now in the crosshairs of the best team in England right now. What are they, four points up on Manchester City? Best team in England. Maybe we shall see by season's end. But they're really, really good. And maybe he gets minutes for them. The way he's going at Birmingham City, Arsenal are like, wow, this was, huh? we did good. So Austin Trusty is another one that uh, is certainly... Probably one for the future. You know, like I've said about Joe Scali, these are really good players, but we got to build them for the next cycle. Austin, I mean, I was watching the game. He's a real modern footballer. Mobile, uh, everything you like about him, able to pass. Uh, obviously, he scored a couple goals too uh, last week, so pretty good in front of goal. I think the list ends there, really. And we mentioned a few guys. But we can't really go too far. Now, what happens, you know, we mentioned Zimmerman and Long likely going to start. There is, they both got knocked out of the MLS Cup playoffs over the weekend. And there is now a big layoff for both of them before their next real competitive World Cup game. Now, I was watching the, the game, uh, the Nashville game, I think, whatever, Marcelo Balboa, legendary 
defender. And he, he was asked about the, the break, and he mentioned that there's going to be a camp. He seemed to downplay the fact that that's going to really affect the way they play. I would tend to disagree with him a little bit. That's a long layoff, and you want these guys to play competitive games when other guys are playing five, six, seven, eight competitive games between now and the World Cup. That's a big drop-off. So that's not going to play in Aaron Long's favor either. So you have some... You have some built-in reasons for Greg Berhalter to go another direction. Maybe that last one's the, the straw that broke the camel's back. We shall see. But let's be good. Aaron Long's a good man. Let's not be so venomous. Okay? I mean, you can criticize, and, I, and people do it the right way, and then some people go way overboard. You know, they want to flatten Aaron Long's tires. I don't know. I just, I feel for the guy. Because... He deserves some criticism, but not like this. It's absurd. I'm going to do a top five this week. Top five Americans in Europe. A very competitive week this time around. Uh, Christian Pulisic, still not in there. So he's not going to make the list. I wanted to put uh, Malik Malik Tillman in here. Scored a goal. Uh, thought he was pretty good. I also want to put Josh Sargent. He scored a goal, but they lost. And I want to give the other positions. I wanted to put Tyler Adams in here. Because he's just been—he's been so consistent and solid. You kind of solid. You take him for granted. But we'll start at number five with Tyler Adams' teammate Brendan Aronson. Got up early to watch the Leeds United game. He was everywhere, uh, combining with players, getting in there to. Uh, he played. That was the best game I think he played since that August game where he scored against Chelsea. So a really good move from him. Even though it was a tough loss for Leeds, losing at home one zero to Arsenal, best team in England. Number four, I also want to put Austin Trusty in here, but I kept him out. Number four, and I know he left injured, and we cross our fingers, is Jordan Peefock. Had a nice little layoff assist for uh, a goal for Union Berlin, who remain top in the Bundesliga. And because you're top in the Bundesliga, you make this. That's a huge achievement. By the way, the Bundesliga announcers call him Jordan, which is so freaking cool. I think we should start doing it here. Let's call him Jordan. Is there a cooler name in sports than Jordan? Hello. So Jordan comes in at number four for Union Berlin. Number three, Haji Wright. Unfortunately for Haji Wright, Antali Spor lost, but he scored two goals. Again, he's probably not making that World Cup squad, but man, he's giving it a good run. Two more goals. Actually, didn't score for four straight games. He scores here, so he makes it to number three. Mark McKenzie, clean sheet for Genk. They move into the first place in the Belgian Jupiler League. What a great achievement. And this whole conversation really circles around Mark McKenzie as a guy who could be that starting center back. And number one, Tim Weah. Played 25 minutes for Lil, Assisted twice for them as Lil are uh, moving up the standings in... Uh, in Liga, I mean, he's coming around. I mean, it's a matter of time before he starts a game, right? It's a matter of time. Uh, they beat Strasbourg 3-zip. Two assists in 25 minutes. I know it's not a full game, but if you get two assists in 25 minutes, you get to number one on this list. Tim Way at number one. The Soccer OG. Be kind. Rate, review, subscribe to the podcast. Like us here. And uh, we'll keep these videos going. They'll be a little bit more World Cup-centric. It's about time. We're getting ready for the big tournament.